So if you are going to explore the world of podcasting and broadcasting, there are some things you need to keep in mind, you know, in order to make it work for you, in order for you to drive traffic, those leads and customers. So the first thing, it's the biggest one, is you always have to have a call to action. You know, if you're going to produce a show like a podcast, video or audio, you know, or you're going to do anything live, what's your call to action? What do you, you got to have, you got to tell someone to do something on every episode, on, you know, every event that you hold. Otherwise, nothing happens. So we've talked about this previously. It's best to have some kind of a model where you're constantly giving away like a special report, you know, a special series on, you know, how to hear, you know, the 12 best tips for 2016 for making money flipping real estate, whatever it is, you have some kind of central opt in piece, you know, that you're giving away that that kind of opt in bribe the thing to get email subscribers. And so this is, you know, another great place for you to promote it. It's the same thing you would promote in AdWords or anywhere else if you were building opt ins. So it's a great place to use that call to action. So you're basically saying, hey, if you're really serious about this, Highly recommend if you haven't read it yet, go get our 12 steps to 2016, you know, real estate flipping guide, you know, give out the URL and have that call to action. But what we're seeing now with some marketers that are starting to use, especially like live events, they're doing special offers, um, starting to see, you know, like kind of like a, a free book plus shipping offer. So, so they're not really coming out and trying to sell like an expensive product from one of these events or with one of these like podcast episodes. Uh, but it's kind of like a, they can sell either a front end small product or do like a free trial or so, you know, if you sell a service, great way to get people to take a free trial. Hey, you know, our podcast is brought to you by, you know, whatever to our software services or tool or whatever, go here now to get a, to get a free trial or to get, you know, signed up now, but you need a call to action in order to make all this work. Use what I call media continuation, right? I've briefly explained this before. Uh, one, of, one of my friends, good friends, longtime marketing buddy I've known for many, many years, Jimmy D. Brown, he came up with this great uh, phrase, uh, and I, and I love loved sharing it with other people, and I use it all the time. He came up with this thing called useful but incomplete. So essentially, when you put out content, you put out information, you're going to want to do this. And all your content marketing, you know, when we get to the SEO section, when you do any kind of uh, even like podcast episodes, these types of things, you, you're giving great content, right? Because that's what it is. It's information. So you're giving information, but you always want it to be useful, but not quite complete. Because if it's, if it's complete, they don't need you for anything else, Right. It could build goodwill potentially, and you could eventually come out with other types of information to sell them. But ultimately, you want everything you do to kind of be the stepping stone for them to want more. So you make it useful so there is tremendous value. You always want to put value in your marketing. Otherwise, you don't just want to sell and pitch to people. And that's what's great about internet marketing is the internet is this knowledge thing. That's why content marketing is so important. Uh, even when we do like uh, paid traffic campaigns, like let's say for AdWords, you're still driving people hopefully to build opt-ins or do things where you're giving away good content, good value just for the email address. So you want to make your content useful, but incomplete. And to complete it, that's the call to action. Hey, if you're really serious about this topic, here's what I recommend you do. And I'll give you the, you know, the next 12 tips or the, the ingredients list to do this recipe I just told you about, so on and so forth. So do that as well with podcasts or live broadcasts. Use scarcity whenever possible. You know, this is... This course, you're going through this whole course, uh, basically I'm giving you an overview of, of essentially of a marketing education. And you're learning these concepts that not only work with driving traffic, but, they, but work for converting traffic. Well, scarcity is one of the most powerful things of all, right? If you put a deadline on something, hey, act now, go download this guide. Uh, it'll be available for free till Friday or download this free extra ex, and get an extra bonus that I'm going to add if you get it by Friday or, you know, add other things to it. If it's something that you have available all the time, then maybe add a limited time bonus or something. But to get people, you know, off off the couch, so to speak, to get them to pick up the phone, as they'd say in the infomercial world, but to, world, to get them to actually take that action. Now, live versus record, I already mentioned this, you know, live is, is limited. Uh, first of all, live has more value. I mentioned that before. Um, people knowing that they're watching something live will get a better response. But now that I've said that, live is limited to the audience that you can drive to the event itself. You know, so there, it's it's two camps here. Uh, live has more value and convert higher, like a live webinar. 
but you're limited by how many people you can get to go get on that live thing at the moment it's being broadcast. Whereas recorded doesn't quite have the same power to it. But once it's recorded, it can be used over and over and over again, you know, every day on autopilot uh, if you do it properly. So those, that's the balance you have to weigh. Do I do something live? Do I do something recorded? Uh, the best answer, especially in the webinar world, is to do both. You do a live webinar event, you get people on it, you get people excited about it, you know, a certain live event, and then you create a recording of it, and then you release it to not only people that were on it live so they can rewatch it or if they got on late, or to new people if they missed it that uh, they can, um, you know, then watch the recording if they didn't get on it live. But this world of casting, you know, live versus recorded, they both have value and they both can be used to drive new leads and customers. Last but not least, you need to make it share worthy or give an incentive to share. But we're really going to talk about this when we get to the section about traffic recycling and how we can really recycle the traffic we already have, like especially people on our list, to do things to create more traffic so we can turn one visitor into four, five, and six. Very, very powerful. Well, the concept of sharing something, you know, liking it, sharing it, you know, emailing their own list about it, linking to it on their own blog, all those types of things, it's either got to be very valuable content and or you have to give someone an incentive to share it. You can give people an incentive to share it. And we're going to talk about this more, but like running contests, you know, say, hey, for all the people that, you know, share this, like this, whatever, uh, I'm going to pick one random person that shared it and I'm going to give away X, you know, a new iPad or a $50 Amazon gift card, a $10 Amazon gift card or you know, a 15 minute consulting with you, whatever, but give people incentives and they're more apt to share and do what you want. So those are some general tips for driving new leads and customers using these type of casting types of uh, avenues.